Hey, welcome in to another edition of the Bobby Carver Show. Show sitting here shotgun with my guy, Joshua Perry. Another big week for the Buckeyes. We're heading into spring game week. It is the end. It is the pinnacle, the climax of spring ball that will be happening this Saturday in the Horseshoe. They have practices Monday, Wednesday, Friday, coaches clinic at the end. So much there. Joshua and I will get into what happened last week in spring practice as well, how things are looking. Uh, on top of the spring ball, they've got the Saddle Up event, which is going to have uh, Gary Lavox, which is fantastic. He's the lead singer for Rascal Flats. They're going to have North to Nashville. His be- Evan Blankenship, former Buckeye who play all around Columbus now, of fame, basically. Uh, so that's going to be going on Buckeye Four Miler on Sunday. Encourage everybody to get out there. Uh, I know Ryan's pushing big. The players, they're going to have guys on the field, Joshua. They're going to be playing, and everybody that's healthy will be out there. And then the saddle up event to raise money with the Buckeye crews and for NIL, like all great stuff and a chance to really see the coaches with their hair down. Plus we're going to get a chance to hear all that from our guy Schlegs. He's going to drop by, which is going to be fantastic. We're going to talk about a potential super league, what that looks like. Is it NFL light or does it feel a little bit more like the EPL Joshua? I mean, there's some elements of both in there. We've got maybe some of the best coaches in college football and our tailgate talk questions from our listeners, but, the question that everybody, Joshua, has been asking. Who is your running backs coach going to be? And not that Ryan Day was doing an inadequate job, but you were allotted 10 assistant coaches. Every team uses all 10. And so with that, they finally make the move. I don't think Ryan wanted to rush on it, but they get uh, Carlos Lachlan coming out of Oregon. He's got a very unique story. Your thoughts on the hire? Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. And I think that there are a lot of people who, um, you know, they had some trepidation for how long it was taking, how many um, potential guys it feels like they weren't able to get. Um, but then you end up with Lachlan, who I do think is a really good coach. Now, um, you mentioned the story there. I think that's something to marvel at. Uh, the other part is he's not been a, an on-field position coach in college for a very long time. So there isn't a ton to work off of, but I have seen the clips floating around on social media. And the one thing I will say is if you're looking for a guy to instill that edge that people say the program needs to continue to work on, I feel like he's the exact guy to do that. He's going to bring that edge. And one clip I was listening to, he's talking about competition, how he wants to drive all of his guys to compete every day. He doesn't care about the star rankings. He's going to get the best guys out on the field. And then he's like, you know, I don't, I don't want any soft baked cookies. He said, there's a bakery for that. And it's called the transfer portal. And I was like, this is the guy. Right. And so, of course, with a guy who hasn't been on field for a while, there's going to be a learning curve. The great thing about it is you got a learning curve with two of the best running backs in the country. And so I think he's going to be fine there Uh, from an attitude standpoint. I think it's an A plus. And so I'm excited to see what he can bring into the program. Yes, it's it's pretty exciting uh, to see him here. Nick, you said he doesn't have the longest resume of being a college football coach. He's got a unique resume. And I think that that's important. Tony Alford was here for about a decade, did a really good job. Had, did a great job building relationships and rapport with players. And that's why you saw that room be very strong for really his entire tenure. Not a lot of transfers, even recently, Dallin Hayden's coming back. Um, and hopefully we can continue to have him stay through the spring. I, I think he's going to be a vital part of this team. And he's talked about it. And you have to be honest with your guys. And so he was at Oregon for a couple seasons. Uh, I believe he's at Western Kentucky before that, had some success down there. But really, his coaching genesis, this guy worked as a uh, law enforcement officer, doing some things that he said he wasn't even allowed to talk about, volunteering. Like, this is what you love, Joshua, because being a part of it, and you're an astute guy, and you observe things and watch, and talking to Schlegs about it, he loved it, is this guy, I'm a, I'm, you know, a, a police officer, I'm a cop, doing some serious stuff in Memphis, Tennessee, which isn't necessarily the... the <laughs> The easiest yeah, city. You to- just just look at some of the stats that come out of yeah. Memphis, and not to not to crap on the city there, but it's it, it's, it's real. It's rough. Yeah, it's rough. So he wanted to be a football coach, and so people always are like, "How do I become Ryan Day? How do I become Urban Meyer? Like Nick Saban?" Like no one ever asks, like, "Well, how do I get in? What do I do?" And he's that guy that just showed up at Memphis. He's like, "I showed up. I you know joke like I stole a T-shirt and just started doing things like." Working in the weight room, weight room intern, which Joshua, you know, it's one of the most thankless jobs that you can have. You basically are cleaning up the weight room and doing stuff that no one else wants to do, except instead of like moving around coffees and things, you're moving around 110 pound dumbbells. Right. 
it's 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 crazy, but I think that is what a lot of people want to see from a coach because it tells me that you're in it for the right reasons. Then you're in it because you love ball and you're in it because you love developing guys, right? And I think in in this is a hard industry to be in, regardless if if you're not truly in love with what you're doing. But um, you know, it's it's just like people talk about players now in the social media era, and everybody wants a pat on the back and they want the viral moment and quite frankly, like I see young coaches in this industry right now. And some of those guys, it feels the same way. They want, you know, two, four, seven to write an article about them and they want to be on <laughs> social media. And they like when Nike has a new release because they want to wear the sneakers. And it's like, okay, but what about coaching? Like, what about being in love with your profession? What about caring about your guys? And you mentioned Tony Alford and all the care that he had. I think it was a non-starter. If you were going to bring a guy into that room who did not give a damn about the people he was going to coach. And so from that standpoint, I think there's going to be a lot of carryover and those guys will immediately respond to the new coaching because it's going to lead from a, a position of, I actually care about you guys and I want you guys to be really good. I love it because he calls himself the the walk-on coach because he's like, that's what I did. I just I just walked on basically, wasn't <laughs> given anything, not there for the shoes, not there for the, be on the sideline wearing one of the 18 different colors, holding up all the <laughs> stuff. He's just whatever I can do to uh, fit in. And so I, I love that he's here now. Like you said, Joshua, he speaks with a conviction about him. He's inheriting, like, let's, not, let's not joke around about it. He's probably inheriting the best running back room in all of college football. So that's obviously a bonus, but I feel like he's going to fit really well with his coaching staff because when I see these guys, you're talking about a head coach uh, in Chip Kelly who gave up that title to come be a coordinator. You're talking about Brian Hartline who you know, came in, was a, a GA, gets promoted quickly. James Laurinaitis who was ga last year you know, promoted quickly, um, you know, just a, a great staff of guys who have of diverse backgrounds of what they've done, how they've done it, but the common thread that you talked about, and you hear it when, you know, we'll talk to Schlegs, you can hear it with him, like guys who care about developing people. And, you know, Jim Trestle spoke to the team uh, last week. We talked about that. And he was like the king of human development and when you develop people, man, they're going to develop as players. You're going to have success, and it's going to feel really good. So I feel like Carlos Lachlan, like he's right in the vein of what you want to try to build here from a culture standpoint. And I love it. I love every part of it. And I, I agree with what you said there. I played for some guys who I felt like were very people first, like Luke Fickle. Um, you know, he just he, – like he's a phenomenal coach, but he just cared, right? Like there was a sense of – care about who you were as a person and it brings out the best in people it really does and you see it it makes some better people and in turn you're going to be a better player like it, you don't necessarily have to do that but i think if you do it you will be able to maximize those players you're going to maximize your room you're going to see a culture that obviously is is moving in the right direction yeah there's always going to be attrition now in college football but you want to make sure it's the right kind of attrition and things are happening for the right way and i think getting carlos lachlan Huge home run. Took a little bit of time. Went down a lot of holes, pursued a lot of guys. But ultimately, Ryan Day gets his man. Excited to have him join the squad. Coming up next, spring ball. And there's a guy we talk about each and every week. And it's like, hey, when's he going to make a highlight today? We'll talk <laughs> about him. We'll talk about some others. A lot of news coming out of the Woody Hayes this week. We'll talk about that next here on the Bobby Carpenter Show. All right, welcome back in to the Bobby Carpenter Show and um, talking a little bit about Carlos Lachlan, the new Buckeyes running back coach. Very excited. We're going to join you join Schlegs after this next segment. But as always, you know, you want to get right into it right away, Joshua. You were talking about spring ball, everything that's going on, how exciting it's been, the development that's happening. Now, you know, this past week, doing a lot of special situations. And that's where I think you begin to separate the wheat from the chaff a little bit. You know, you're playing base defense, you're playing base offense, you want to make sure the guys can move, make sure they know what they're doing. Now all of a sudden you're adding in these elements of the special situations, the third down, red zone, two minute. Can guys operate under pressure? Can they do things when they've got to think? You're going to have some more adjustments now. You're not just seeing your base stuff. And this is when I think it starts to get really good. Yeah, it's always fun. And uh, Luke Fickle used to – he used to go through this exercise in the meeting room when it came to situations where he would just he would name a uh, he would name a coverage that we had or he would name a defensive play call. And he would be like, why would I call this? 
right? And like he would make you think about why a certain uh, play call would be the way to go in a situation. And you get out on the football field and sometimes you're tired and your mind starts to leave you and you get into these special situations and you're not really thinking from a football IQ standpoint. But just going back to the, okay, well, why would coach actually call this? It kind of gets you back going. And so I think that you're trying to test that, right? Like, do guys understand what the the coverage or what the play is supposed to do? Can that help them get in the right position? Um, to your point, can guys perform under pressure? And then ultimately, who's a playmaker? Like, who just has that instinct when it's time to go to just actually make the play? Like, you, you're you on a, a two-minute drill. You're playing defense. You know they need a touchdown. Like, you know, can you get to the quarterback? Like, sacks kill two-minute drills. Can you get the ball turned over? Like, those are things that you want to see. Um, and so I'm pretty sure there's some guys that probably turn some heads in those situations there. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been awesome to watch. And we talk about him every week, Jeremiah Smith. When guys come up, it's like people go to practices, Joshua. And I, I go to about every one when I'm in town. And if even I catch, you know, the last 15 minutes or maybe watch, you know, an hour, hour and a half, Jeremiah Smith has made a play. And it's a joke now, like, who's he going to get today? What play is he going to make? And we're talking about like the starters, man. You're talking, you know, Jordan Hancock. You're talking Denzel Burke. Uh, you're talking uh, Davidson Igba Noose, like guys who are Sunday caliber players that he's putting work in on. And it's kind of the point where they, it happens and they just jog to the back. Offense is going and celebrating. But I watched him catch this one hander in the, the end zone because we're waiting. And I think it was finally like period 20. It's towards the end of practice. And he hadn't made his quote signature play yet <laughs> Run the fade three by one in the corner. He's got getting face guarded by forget who, and the corner doesn't even turn around. Like, I'm just going to try to, to tack, like maul you. I'm going to tackle you. Like you. I'm not even going to make a play on this. And he just looks Joshua stone, like boom, throws up the right hand, catches it, feet falling out of bounds. Doesn't even put the second hand on the ball, just holds it away. And like, I look, I'm like, I don't even, I don't even really know what to say about that. I mean, there's very few guys that I think could play on Sunday after maybe like one year or coming straight out of high school. And I've begun to think like, it's like a generational thing. Not many guys can do it. I'm beginning to think that after this year, like he could be an NFL player if he wanted to be in a very good one at that. It just, I, I ask the question when I hear these stories and it's been consistent, it's been repeated. So this is not a fluke. Um, what happens like from a DNA standpoint for a guy to be like that. Like, like how are freaks created? Like I would love for somebody, a scientist to go through and just like figure out how freaks are created. Cause this is what this is. Like part of it of course is he's being coached up and he's clearly taking to coaching and he's a guy who's motivated to play in the fall and make a difference for this team. And so you got to give credit for that. The other part is God created him different than he created everybody else that's ever walked the earth. And the guy shows it every time he goes out on the field. Well, and the important thing you talked about shows it every time he comes out on the field. And that's the one thing I you know. Ryan has been very cautious in his praise. Mm -hmm. And he's always like, I don't want to get myself in trouble here because young guys, the, the biggest issue with them, Joshua, is, is inconsistency. Like, and Fick would talk about that. Don't give me this. Bill Parcells would say, don't, I don't want any yo-yos. Like, don't be that guy. I want to know what you are all the time. And now you've got a decent enough sample size. You've been in spring ball for five weeks. And every single day, the dude shows up ready to work like a pro. And they've got a little deal in the woodies, pros versus players. And it's like what pros do versus what players do. And are you thinking about football all the time? Are you working on it? Is it in your mind? When you leave the woody, is everything just gone and away from you? And you can tell that he's a guy that this is always on his conscience. Um one other, a couple other things too. One other receiver that's played really well, Noah Rogers, uh, entered the transfer portal. And this is kind of one of those unique success stories, Joshua, where kid gets in the portal, decides actually to return, comes back, and is actually playing really good ball. Had a good winner and is looking really good. And I start looking at these wideouts, and you're like Carnell Tate, um, and like it's I honestly kind of feel bad for Mecca because he's kind of on the shorter side. You like Carnell Tate, right. Rogers, uh, Jeremiah Smith, and I'm like. These guys all look like it's like an NFL wide receiving group of a really good team. They're tall. They're physical. They look good. I'm not sure how they're going to choose to deploy them and how this is going to work. But, man, they have some unbelievable options. And these guys are competing every day. Yeah, I think it's a, a beautiful thing, right? And and I talked about this on the last show, but 
Now you start to get into the territory of guys who can cover up mistakes. When you have that type of depth, you can roll them in. You can feel confident. Those guys don't get tired. They go out there and they continue to make plays. And where that's important, again, is when you start to evaluate the offensive line and how that's still a work in progress. And they're going to have to figure some things out as they head into training camp. A quarterback battle. What helps out whoever becomes a starting quarterback for the Ohio State University is like, well, we got some really good weapons and we can also hand off the pill anytime we need to. And so this is shaping up, right? Like the skill positions are in a really good spot. And now the rest of the offense has to come together. And this thing could be ridiculous if it does. A couple other things you talked about the offensive line. You know, what's interesting is there's been moving some guys, rotating some guys. And I think when, you know, McLaughlin came in, people thought, okay, Hinsman's out, he's done. What's interesting, in, in the interior of the line, Joshua, you know this, like guard and center, they're not all that different. And sometimes you may be a better guard versus being a better center versus vice versa. Some guys can do both. And they've experienced exploring, you know, McLaughlin and Hinsman at guard a little bit because, you know, Fryer might end up being the best tackle option. They've got Luke Montgomery working, Tiger Shibola, and so they're kind of rolling all of these things in the pie. And I've kind of enjoyed seeing the combination out there of, of Hinsman and McLaughlin and the fact that you can have maybe Hinsman at a guard or even McLaughlin at a guard, guys that are centers, like just that knowledge base of understanding, I think could be very beneficial for this team. Yeah, the uh, the idea of having multiple guys that can play center too, not just the, the physical thing, and you were, you were leaning into this a little bit, but when you're a center, it's almost like you're the quarterback up there on the offensive line. So having guys who have understanding of football and multiple guys who can help recognize fronts or maybe where a blitz is coming, I think ultimately benefits everybody. Uh, you know, we talk about communication. The linebacker room is always a Mike linebacker's got to be the guy. Well, the Will and Sam got to talk too, and they got to let everybody know what's going on. And so if you have multiple guys up front who can do that, you certainly put yourself in a better spot. Uh, speaking of linebackers, keep an eye on a guy who – out of Glenville, kind of a developmental dude is putting on mass and looks pretty good. Arvell Reese. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. He's if he, another yeah. one of those where yeah. how did God create that one? He <laughs> was given a lot. And then all of a sudden now, like go in and work with Schlegs and Mickey Marotti, throw some yeah. weight on. James Laurinaitis has a great way of communicating with guys. He seems to be picking up linebacker. I don't know like how impactful he'll be this season, but I think he's going to be a pretty special player uh, down the line. He's looking really good as well. And then we got this week's spring ball, spring game. Quarterback to keep an eye on because those guys, I think the young guys are going to play. I'm just saying, Julian saying he, he's looked pretty good. And I don't know if you can make a push as a freshman, but maybe he possibly can. All right, we got our guy Schlegs coming up next. You're not going to want to miss this on the Bobby Carpenter Show. And welcome back into the Bobby Carpenter Show. We've had a number of great guests over the previous handful of weeks. Cade Stover, uh, Steel Chambers. Occasionally, we get this guy popping up when he's not in the middle of running the armory, helping out at OSU, everything that he's doing. Pleased to now welcome in our guy, Mr. Anthony Schlegel Valley. Schlegs, how are we doing today, sir? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. It's 70 degrees. It's in Jacksonville. I flew in uh, Friday after practice got in about 5 40 uber to a baseball game watched that and uh watched the last episode of invincible with my son because that's kind of one of the things that we do he's 17 so we kind of watched that that was over then i slept in this morning went did some went to the home depot had to ship some stuff putting gas in the kids cars because that's you know i'm dad i'm home for a hot minute and i want to just make them take care of them a little bit so and it's really sunny, and now I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to go play nine holes of golf, and then I'm going to watch some basketball and drink some bourbon. Are you going to let so Sam? Now, then I'm going to fly out tomorrow morning. So you're going to let Sam beat you up on the golf course is what you're telling us? Yes, that's the fact. I mean, the kid's 11. Well, he just turned 12, but he has a really good iron game. I mean, he goes out there and shoots, you know, 40 to 45 from the senior tip. So Okay. What, what are we yeah, doing? He'll be, so you'll be back in Ohio then for the eclipse because the eclipse is on Monday. Yeah, I know guess that's what? A like, big... like, hey, guess, guess who? Has, guess who really wants to see the eclipse? Not this guy. That's what I, I mean. Like, so what are gonna, talking about? they're going to stop practice. Ryan's not going to call him up and like wave it off and be like, "All right, guys, put on your little goggles." And they come something. every ten years. Doesn't it come every ten years? I don't know. The cicadas come every not, not not one like this. Allegedly, this is like a oh a once in a generation event. Oh. Like oh, a mega that's, eclipse, that's, Josh, this is sorry. a mega eclipse. 
Yeah. Okay, guess guess what? Still don't care. Like, what is it? Why? <laughs> I don't care. You know, I would uh, rather have six hours of sleep, uh, serve people, train a freaking hard, eat some heavy iron, eat a lot of protein, and then go to bed. Okay, so you mentioned the sleep thing. You said six hours yeah, of yeah, sleep, sleep, and you said I you did, slept I in more. I slept in. Today, okay, yeah. you said you slept in. So, so what time is sleeping into you? Oh man, I woke up at like eight thirty, nine o'clock. <laughs> now, now, back when I was younger, I could sleep in until noon. That would sure. be that would be fantastic. But I mean, I went to bed later last night, probably around eleven thirty midnight, and I slept. I got a full eight hours of sleep, which is what I really want to do. However, when you do all the things that I do do, that's quite difficult. And guess what? You got to pay the piper. And I ain't complain about it. I chose to do it, and the spirit is getting me through it. So it's like, all right, here you go. But now I got to come back home, recharge my batteries. Love on the family, and then I'll be back out on Monday. I like that, Schlegs. I chose to do it. The spirit's getting me through it. That could maybe be a shirt for you. No, but it's just the reality of the situation. I think sometimes people look at trials that they're going through, and like, hey, check, check yourself before you wreck yourself. You're the one that accepted this. So let's not forget that. And then let's also give credit where credit is due, is that, you know, give of myself 100% in anything I do. And for when it comes to serving the guys at Ohio State, they get everything I got. When it comes to the armory and the people that are there and the environment, the culture that Dr. Bailey and I are trying to create in that in that place um, of trying to serve people and optimize their fitness journey, their medical journey, wherever they are on it, that, that gets everything I got. And then simultaneously, you get the difference that's selling really good. And I got a, my, my like newest product out that was pro, you know, demoing at Ohio State. I want to see the way that guys uh, respond to it and how it works. Hey man, I chose all those things, and the spirit sustains me because I'm I really don't necessarily know uh, what like what are in the car. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Like, man, if you, it's what you do. That's what it's called life, and you just take it one day at a time and you swing as hard as you possibly can. Well, that is that's some fantastic stuff. Stuff slides. now. Spring ball almost over. Been helping yeah, talk about it. That. Yeah, and you know we talked to Ryan earlier. Um, on my local show, I mean, you come on and you wanted to hype up huge weekend for the Buckeyes here is they've got obviously, you know, three practices, the three final practices, the coaches clinic, they've got some sort yeah. of side nuggets with Schlegs. I've heard that's yeah, no out there questions with them. Um, we've got the spring game, which they're trying to get a hundred thousand people. And as of now, tentatively, the weather looks to be pretty good, which is always a positive, the saddle up event, which you can talk a little bit about like this. Let's just start opening this weekend up, big dog, and letting it breathe a little bit. Yeah, just crack it open and let it breathe. So, you know, we have practice Monday, Wednesday. We have the coaches' uh, clinics there. Uh, but I believe, Bob, you, myself, Joshua, you would have been involved in this, but you live in Chicago. So that's that's kind of the problem. I told but, him no. They, they asked. He said no. Yeah, he said, guess what? I'm in Chicago and I'm working. I'm not driving. The I, I, I've got I've got a three-week-old baby as well. So exactly. That's life's a little hectic. I mean, life, life is crazy, man. Like. Yeah, why did you ask me in the first place? But anyways, we got you, me, Bob, uh, Bob and James and AJ will do that. Then in the, in the weight room, we're doing stuff where we talk training and mine's going to be more on like side nuggets. You know, uh, I, honestly, I really don't care about the, the, the reps and sets and stuff. So you can throw, you can have the best reps and sets out there in the planet, the best program design out there on the planet. But if you can't extrapolate greatness from people that don't necessarily want to get it and have a relationship and connect, they're going to give you half. And I want to talk about the standard. And I want to talk about the coaches. Are are you filling it for your athletes? Like I already said, Mitch says that we're here to maximize your genetic potential, right, and keep you safe. But also in the game of sports or whatever, we're also teaching these kids. Are you giving them a high physical literacy? Or are you just telling them to go do some stuff because that's how you did it back in the 80s or the 90s when you played? You actually get in the weeds of it. Is this what your kids need? Yes or no? And are you are you just fanatical about serving them in that in that manner? And how does it how does it progress them to be an adult? You know, because we talk about practice. I'm now I'm just giving you freaking side nuggets. We talk about game reps and and, and uh, physical reps and metal reps. If that's what you say on the field, that's the same damn thing in the weight room. It's called spotting and the person doing the work. That's a metal rep. And it's a physical rep, right? So those cues and how you communicate and how you hold your teammate accountable, it's the same damn thing when you're on the football field. If that guy messes up and then you want an opportunity 
Well, you better be freaking doing your damn metal reps because when you go in there, your job is to do three perfect metal reps. Well, guess what? And you communicate. If you see him doing a mistake, you're going to hold him accountable. Just like if he squats improperly, he's not bracing correctly and his hands are in the wrong position and he, he doesn't do it correctly, that's your job as a spotter. That's team accountability. That's the stuff that wins and transfers to the field and in life. Not five by three versus three by five, not all that other BS, you know? So anyways, that, that's going to be my side nugget with Schlegs. And there'll be some other other juicy things in there as well. Oh, so, boy. Anyway, hey, listen, we got the spring game coming. People should go because this is a really an exciting team. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Some of the talent that's on this deal um, makes me just shake your head. And, and you guys can get into this later because afterward there will be attrition. Just letting everybody out there know. And it's not from anything from a culture standpoint. Let me just put that out there, okay? Because anybody that thinks that is the case, you're stupid. So that's one. Two, the game's going to be fantastic. Three, you got saddle up, giddy up afterward. That's going to be raising money for cancer research along with NIL. And guess what? Not afraid to say it because it, it's, it's a reality in the situation of college football. Then you have the Buckeye Four Miler on Sunday. Who's David Copperfield? Sounds, so hold on. What is the saddle up? Explain to the folks if maybe they've never been a part of it, Schlags, <clears> what yeah. the saddle up event is, what you're going to be a, get to see and do. Well, there's going to be players there. There's going to be coaches there. You get to see coaches kind of like just not let their hair down because they're responsible adults, but you're going to see them just kind of like chill out a little bit. You get, I mean, how many times do you guys, as the regular general population, get to come into the, the Woody Hayes Athletic Center? The answer is no. The answer is no. Uh, they don't get to, right? So it's like, so you get an opportunity to do that. You're going to have Norton National there. Gary Lavox is the lead singer for Rascal Flats. He's going to be doing it. Um, you'll probably see some people get up there and, and sing and play drums and you know, it's just a great time, and you're going to be mingling with other people. And, and guess what? Don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, Bob, nice to meet you. I'm so-and-so. Like, how's it going? And don't be afraid to go up to players. I'm like, we, we've always said this. This, this is another side nugget. I'm eating up time. Here's the deal. When you go to events like this, please go up and, like, introduce yourself to people <clears throat> because that's what really this is, right? Like, NIL has opened up the interaction between players and fans and fans and coaches. Now, if you come up and you tell me, hey, I think that your guys' weight room program is soft. I'm freaking body slam you. I might take you directly into the weight room and show you uh, the weight program and the softness that you that you want to speak of. So let's also not kid ourselves, people. You have to have a high football acumen to be able to play fast. Like there's a, there's a lot of different parameters that go into it. So if you say some stupid ass shit to me while I'm at this event or any event, I might just have to put you in your place and show you right away because I'm always gas station ready and Waffle House ready. All right, but you should yes. go out there. You should go out there and introduce yourself and talk ball and have fun and engage because that's what NIL has now opened up. Open yourself up a little bit to the people. Hey, who's David Copperfield? That's where we are. So, anyway, it's going to be a great time raising money for cancer, raising money for NIL. And I will say this we have great human beings in that building, and they're going to put on a show. Everybody that's healthy is going to play in that game. And it's going to be fun to watch, man. And that's kind of the reason why we're pushing to get 100,000 people. First spring game televised nationally on Fox, the Ohio State University Buckeyes. Don't forget that. Poof, David Copperfield, our guy Anthony Schlegel, dropping knowledge bombs right there, getting everybody ready to go. Spring game this Saturday, saddle up event, get your tickets, get there. It's going to be a good time. Just like I said, come up and talk to him, but don't come up with some weak sauce and nonsense or he'll have to put yes. you down because yep. that's the reality of what we're working with. Schlegs, thank you once again, sir. You go back to being a dude and getting your butt kicked by your son on the golf course. Up next, Joshua and I are going to talk about the potential for the Super League and if that's the right thing to do here on the Bobby Carpenter Show. Wow. After Schlegs, always seem to need a cigarette, Joshua. Um, need a nice <laughs> deep breath, a glass of bourbon. He uh, He's running wild, but he's doing some great things and promoting, obviously, the spring game, saddle up. All that stuff is going to be great coming up. So I encourage everybody to get out, get out there. It's a great chance. The spring game for Ohio State families. It's cheap. You can go out. Ryan said he's going to play all the healthy guys. Uh, so get out there and check it out. It's going to be on Big Fox, so you want to make sure Buckeye Nation is represented really well. Now, Talking about representation. They're talking about a Super League, Joshua. Now, they've got some folks that are involved in this. 
uh, West Virginia president, former Ohio State president, Gordon Gee as well. 76ers, that's the Philadelphia 76ers owner, David Blitzer. I'm not sure how he plays into this. Uh, the NFL's number two executive, uh, Brian Rollup, Rollap, are part of this 20-person committee trying to revamp the way college football is going to be done. And so here's the outline of it. They'd have 70 top-tier programs that are all basically the, the former Power Five conferences plus Notre Dame and SMU. And there'll be permanent members of this which I, I'm not a fan of the permanent, of like the top tier. And then you have the rest in this below tier, and there's going to be some sort of teams that will have this relegation element where if you're not playing at the highest piece point, you can move down, other teams can move up. And in doing this, you could probably collectively bargain the TV stuff a little bit better. Um, and with that, then you could put limits on the transfer portal because you'd be giving players some dollars. Like there's some elements that I think are good. I just don't, know if the way that this is constructed if greg sankey and and uh uh tony petiti are going to be like yeah this is something we want to do i wouldn't do it if i were them and i, I think that we're headed toward this sort of a, a makeup and i personally prefer a situation where maybe it's a power conferences play in one division and then the rest of college football plays in a different division because i hate the idea that we sit here and we lie to teams at the beginning of the year and say that everybody's competing for the same championship when that is absolutely untrue. Um, the way that this is working, I don't love it. You mentioned the permanent nature of the 70 teams. Like, I think if we're going to get promotion and relegation, folks would love to see Auburn relegated. Like, why can't Nebraska under Scott Frost be relegated? Like, we would love to see some of the big brands have to earn their way back into being big brands. You can't just do it based off of history. You got to do it based off of what you're currently doing. Um, there would be some roadblocks to, to seeing that happening, unfortunately. Um, and so I think that there needs to be this idea that we can have tiers of college football and it's going to be financially beneficial to everybody. But also, if you're in those lower divisions, certainly your, your games are going to be on TV. But we can also entice you into being able to compete for your own championship. And then maybe that's going to create better buy in uh, for fan bases of those teams, for players of those teams. You got to get people to care. I think the Syracuse AD or president was talking about this and like, you're another school that you've got a great history. There's been some great players that play there. You guys haven't really cared to the level that you need to, to invest. So maybe you should have been on the relegation and maybe like Buffalo who was carrying and playing <laughs> at a high level should have potentially superseded you. That's why the permanent nature of this, I don't like because anybody that's worried about the permanent nature are only schools, Joshua, who think that they could potentially fall off of that. Like, you don't see Ohio State, they're not worried. Bama, Clemson, Nick Saban, like these guys, uh, you know, Michigan, they wouldn't be worried about that. I mean, let's keep it for real, too. Like, if you're you're in the middle or bottom tier of some of these big conferences, you feel like you're in a great spot because the product doesn't necessarily have to be great. You don't have to invest and you still get a check. And so I think this is incentive now for people to say, OK, well, we got this money coming in. How can we spend this wisely to enhance our programs? Um, you know, how can it will probably force some people to, to actually clean up their budgets a little bit and, and, and really get more juice out of the squeeze when it comes to their money? Like, I, I think it ends up actually being a positive if you threaten people with the idea of if you can't get things right, then you're not going to be competing with the big boys. And I've heard Bo Bishop talk about this a lot, who's on uh, 97 on the fan, does a great job. And he's like, some of these schools benefit from geographical alignments that happened 80 and 90 years ago. Yes. You know, and you look at some of the schools like, hey, just because you were part of this, you're not really trying and haven't been for the last quarter century. So do you really have that much in common? The, the only problem with this, and I know we're going to get into this, this will be a big topic through the spring and summer, is if these conversations don't start with – Tony Petiti and Greg Sankey, I feel like they're probably a little DOA because those are the guys that you're going to have to ultimately convince to get the coaches and everyone else on the right track in the 80s, the presidents moving forward. Because something like this does need to happen. I think the general framework, there's some quality to this because you have to put restrictions on the transfer portal. The only way you can do that is when you start sharing revenue with players, which the easiest way for that to happen is with some sort of super-ish league How's that all look and how that's how's is that going to work? Well, that's going to take some time to ultimately figure out as well. Coming up next, questions from you. It's tailgate talk brought to you by Tipico Sportsbook. We're excited to get to it and hear what you want to hear from us here on the Bobby Carpenter Show. All right, welcome back in the show. And it's our favorite 
part, our favorite segment each and every week. It's Tailgate Talk, brought to you by Tipico Sportsbook. They're going to change the way you bet with their new Tipico Rewards program. The more you bet, the more you can earn, and the more you can win. And to celebrate this big play, while well, they're holding their own company-wide contest to see which of our shows can climb the leaderboard and prove they're the best bettors here at Big Play. The winning show may even give out some bet credits to their listeners each month. So be sure to follow along with your favorite Big Play personalities on social media to lock in bets with us each and every week, all week long. Getting into the baseball season, getting into a little bit of golf. Basketball is finally wrapped up and wrapping up here. Uh, so, so much to get into. And then football, Joshua, you got the futures coming in on who's going to win the conferences, CFP, Heisman, all that. It'll all be fun to do. Remember, must be 21 older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, Bobby, now we got some... putting a, a couple of shekels down on the UFL. I mean, they got some rousing games going on here in the spring. You know, my kids love it. It's amazing. They go, they go there's no football. I'm a, and Kellen was like, I found this. My 10 year old, he's like, this is football. I go, it is. <laughs> and there are guys in here that are good players. I go, and I'm glad this is happening. If you put it on in front of me, Joshua, I'll watch it. Like it's either that or watch like Shawshank Redemption for the 30th time on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm cruising around TBS or whatever it is, trying to find just <laughs> nonsense or things that I've seen. Cruising around on. TBS, that's some old man behavior. Well, it is. It's a Saturday afternoon, so once I get my yard work done, I've seen my kids' games. We've been having this oh monsoon-style weather, so it's so soft here in the Midwest that they've closed a lot of the fields. I'm just going to watch some whatever reruns of Office and other nonsense <laughs> that's out there. So I, I would, I'll put it on. If my kids find it and it's there, I'll sit down because – you know, you and I cover college football. We've done it for a long time. And with that, like you recognize some of the names. Like, okay, how's this guy doing? And I'm sure with this, the NFL, they want it to succeed, number one, because they can utilize this as their developmental league outside of college, right. which is big, and they don't have to pay for it. And then number two, it's also their test market. The Rock is genius. Like for any new innovations, you know, like, hey, we're going to do this instead of the kickoff, or we're going to try that. And there's, oh, by the way, we're not going to use the chains anymore. We're going to use cameras and technology and microchips and stuff that's real that we have Should access have to. forever ago. Yeah. So they're going to, well, you guys work the bugs out there. And then when it's ready after a season or two, we'll deliver it to the NFL. Like it's, it's a great thing. So yeah, I'll watch it. I'll enjoy it. It'll be entertaining. Um, got this question coming here. I think this is an interesting one from uh, Terry Zorns. How much do you think? The Bucks D will be changing up its front line looks this upcoming season. 20%, 30% of the time, maybe more. I'll let you have the floor on that. Yeah, it's always an interesting conversation about what the what the front looks like because now you're talking about changing the structure of the defense, and uh, that's a lot to adjust. So you see it a lot in the NFL, and those guys have time. They, all they do is football. Um, in college, it's a little bit more difficult. I think with some of the personnel, Ohio State can do it. The situations where I'd like to see them do that a lot more is on third downs. Like I, if the defense looked completely different in the third down package, I wouldn't be mad about that because that's where you can get exotic and you can try to confuse people and you make them spend an inordinate amount of time on a situation that they don't see a ton compared to first for people who don't know first and second down are the two most common downs in football. Right. And so it feels like you should spend the most time there, but people say that third and fourth downs are most critical. So you force people to prepare differently. Um, I, I would like to see that in terms of like a base defense look like I'm, I'm not exactly sure how much you want to change it up because I'm not sure how much you want to put on your players plate as they have to prepare for games. But um, with the personnel they've got, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw a little bit different. The good news is, is you have a lot of veteran guys. You start looking you know, at the, in the secondary, Lathan Ransom's back. Sonny Styles is back. He'll be in a different role. Cody Simons played a lot. The whole starting D line, those guys have played a ton of football and so when you have veteran players who understand it, they're more acceptable to being able to play other things and play them with knowledge. So I do think that's key. Plus the other piece of this, Joshua, and this is why I'd like to see him change up on third down, is we talked last week about this and you know Lorenzo Styles, his play, and, and what that's giving them flexibility. We start talking about Caden Curry, Kenyatta Jackson, Mitchell Melton, five other DNs that are all different body types that can do some different things. And Mitchell Melton played linebacker can go to some of those three, three looks, change it up a little bit. Like use CJ Hicks off the edge. You have guys that are similar body types. that can do a lot of different stuff, which makes it really hard on the quarterback to identify rushers versus identifying droppers and different things. So I, 
I yep. would like to see some of that being done. And they've got the guys that have the aptitude. Ohio State, let's be honest, they recruit pretty smart dudes. And they've yep. got two really smart ones in the middle with Lathan and um, Cody. And so and those other guys have played a lot of ball and they get it. So excited for that. Uh, last question here, Joshua. I think this is a pretty good one. In your opinion, was it the sense of urgency of the program to win it all this year that started to get Dr Jim Tressel more involved? Obviously, it can't be a bad thing for him to be more around the program more. I don't know if it was necessarily like the sense of urgency to win it all this year. I think it was like a, a, a we have to be better as a program. And so what resources do we have? I think any coach that sits there in the offseason and does not ask himself the question, how can we get better? What resources do we have to get better is not doing their job well. And Jim Trestle sitting right there and Ryan Day for as long as it feels like he's been at Ohio State, this is his first job. And so when you can go to a guy who is veteran and is well-respected and a guy who is very sensible and organized and communicates well for advice, I don't know why you wouldn't do it. So like, is winning it all part of it? Certainly. Like, and that's the standard at Ohio State every year. So, of course, you feel that urgency, and especially when you have this roster. But I think Ryan Day is also sitting back and he's asking himself, how can I be a better coach and how can I have a better team? And if Jim Trestle's sitting right there, I think he's the guy you want to bring in to help those things happen. Absolutely. Introspection, introspection is a huge part of development as a coach, introspection, and even as a program, looking at it, how can we get better? What can we do? you know, to get over this hump in, in Michigan, win some more big games. Like Ryan Day's been great, but you mentioned it's his first job. And then part and parcel with that, Jim Trestle's availability increased dramatically when he retired <laughs> yeah, from Youngstown yeah. State. So right. he has more discretionary time. He is now finally retired. He did have a full-time job running a university, so it really wouldn't have been fair to them to continue to pull him down here. So I think that that timing – Sometimes it's, every, sometimes it's everything in life, Joshua, and I think it was really a big uh, part of this here. And I'm excited because I know Ryan and their relationship has grown. And having a guy who's won five national titles can only help you and played for a bunch more as well. Uh, coming up, we're going to wrap up the show. Hear what Joshua's plans for the Eclipse this week are here on the Bobby Carpenter Show. All right, welcome in as we wrap up the show. We got a big eclipse, something that's supposed to happen only once every generation or whenever it is. Joshua, I'm not sure. Slag said he wasn't interested in it. Are you interested in a total eclipse of the heart? Am I interested? Yes. Like, will I be able to enjoy it? No, I'll probably be stuck in the office. Like, this is how life is, you know, when you're a, a functioning adult and you have to go into an office for a job, which many people have the luxury not to. And I'm a little bit jealous. I cannot lie. Um, I'm not going to be able to enjoy it. So I'll see the pictures on social media. Certainly, there'll be some commentary about it that I'll probably enjoy. But ultimately, I'll be posted up in a cave somewhere. Yeah, I, I teach classes at Ohio State, the business school on Monday and Wednesday. Class is at 3.55. I think it starts at 3.18 Eastern. So hopefully I might try to, to grab a little glimpse of it before I head in. Uh, it's amazing. In Central Ohio, the only two school districts that are going to be in, in school this day on Monday are Bexley, I believe, in Upper Arlington. Sure. Southwestern just canceled because they had so many teachers Smart falling kids. off. Yeah, because yeah, they no, want to they, they, they want to make sure their kids are well educated. <laughs> hey, there's not there's not a problem with that. Hey, there isn't. My wife was complaining about it. My kids are yelling because everybody said that they don't love them and they can't go do this. But hey, I always said, if you're not in school, you're not learning, Joshua. Like you can't get, you got to be able to be in the weight room to lift weights. You can't lift that's weights it. virtually. That's that's not a thing. So you know what? Thank you for tuning in to this edition of the show. Coming up next week, we will wrap up the spring game, all of the events that are coming there. So thank you for tuning in.